play hurt. And, uh, you know, like I told him, you know, the way, way, way it works to me is, you know, the good Lord injuries, it it's just takes time. That's just the way the good Lord meant it to be. So, uh, you know, we got to figure some things out. But I, I think they'll come out swinging. This is a good group. In other words, Jim Leland after the ball game last night. Tigers trying to get it going here this evening. And, Rod, uh, the injuries are part of the game. Hopefully the Tigers can get over that hump. No doubt about that. I think what he's uh, really disappointed about the last couple of nights, Phil Hughes of the New York Yankees uh, before the Yankees left town, and then last night, Ubaldo Jimenez. He feels like uh, his team let those guys off the hook. And I think he's kind of disappointed in their approaches the last two games in particular. All right, let's check out the starting lineup for the Cleveland Indians tonight, presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers. Shinsu Chu leads it off. He'll play in right field, followed by Scrubel Cabrera, the shortstop. Jason Kipnis leading the team in homers and steals, followed by Carlos Santana. He's catching this evening. Michael Brantley in center. Johnny Damon back in the lineup in left, followed by Kochman, Laporta, and Chisenhall tonight for Cleveland. Tiger starting pitcher Max Scherzer is presented tonight by Soaring Eagle Casino. Well, if you're Max Scherzer, your, your approach tonight should be one of which that you're going to put up zeros throughout the game until your team scores enough runs for you to win the game. That's the kind of mindset you have to have as a starting pitcher when your team is scuffling offensively. Beaumont the Hospital, uh, Beaumont Health System, excuse me, is the sponsor of the Tigers defensively. It's Quint Berry back out in the outfield. He's in center. Peralta Santiago up the middle, and Brian Holiday just called up from the minor leagues is making his first major league start. His heart has to be thumping a little bit as he gets ready to catch Max Scherzer in his big league debut here this evening. Shinsu Chu leads it off. And the first pitch of the ball game tonight is in for a strike on one. A gorgeous night here at the ballpark. 77 degrees, our game time temperature. Shinsu Chu last night, one for four. And a really bevy of outstanding catches in right field as well. This will be a learning process for Holiday during the course of the game. I was talking to him during batting practice, and he said he caught Max a couple of times in bullpen sessions down in Lakeland, but has never caught him in live action. The 0 2 is hit to the right side and through. It's a base hit for two. An 0 2 single to right field. By the way, if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. No balls, two strikes. Max has to make a better pitch here to Chu. Uh, that's a fastball that's off the plate inside, but Chu's still able to get to it. And when you get yourself ahead in that particular situation, you have to make sure you bury a pitch down or go above the strike zone, something he can't get to. Uh, as Dribble Cabrera lifts this one in the air to left center. Don Kelly coming in, staring into the sunlight for the first out of the ball game. Expect the Cleveland Indians to be somewhat aggressive today against Max. They know that he's been piling up strikeouts uh, with regularity. 30 strikeouts for Max in his last three outings. Therefore, if you're Cleveland, you know you can't let Max get ahead of you. Here is Jason Kipnis with one out. Kipnis last night was hitless, but he's batting 275, having a terrific season so far two on first base has eight steals he's been caught once he might want to test the young new catcher Brian Holiday well Jim Leland was asked about that before the game today if he felt the Indians might run a little bit and he said well that's fine because we feel this young man has really good footwork and outstanding arm Max has to give him a chance to throw though which is always the key And a strike called on Kipnis. If you weren't with us in last night's game, uh, we told you that the Cleveland Indians are tied with the Tampa Bay Rays with 40 sti 46 steals as a team. You don't usually associate Cleveland with speed. There it is graphically, Tampa 46, Oakland 44. Good pick up at first base by Prince. One on one out just underway here at Comerica Park. On a beautiful evening here in downtown Detroit. The Indians got a leadoff single from Chu. And he got a running start, but now Chu will stop and head back to the bag. 
Max doesn't have a great pickoff move, but what he does do a very nice job of is holding the baseball while on the rubber. And you can see that Chu prematurely took off. And before Max's team alerted him that he was doing so, he stepped off and he stopped Chu. Here's the 0 1. Driven high in the air to center. Barry going back, still going back, and he makes the running catch. On the warning track in center field, Quentin Barry runs it down. I don't know if Quentin is uh, not getting a good read off the bat here early, but even in last night's game, one of those plays to center field, he got a pretty late break, and he got a late break here as well, but he's able to make up with it because he's got that blazing speed. And he saved an extra base hit and a run. Two gone. That'll bring up Carlos Santana. And time was called before that last pitch was thrown. That's a no pitch. Santana batting 239. Return to the lineup last night, and uh, after a concussion, put him on the DL for seven days. Scherzer missing. 95 on the fastball here in the first inning. One ball and no strikes. Max, of course, had that big strikeout game of 15 against the Pirates three starts ago. He has rolled up 78 strikeouts this year. The month of May, Rod was really good. Now, the ERA was still a bit high, but the rest of the numbers were outstanding. That bottom uh, note pretty much the walks. Only eight walks in his last six starts. He had seven in one start this year alone against the New York Yankees. Wave and a miss. One ball, one strike on Santana. Good action on that changeup there for Max. And that's exactly what you need to do to a left-handed dominant lineup that they're running at him tonight. It's a 1-0 pitch and it's a fading changeup down in a way that Santana swings and misses. Now the 1-1. High fly ball right field. Shallow. Bosch coming in. It'll hang up long enough, but he dropped it. To third base goes Chu. And Bosch just could not squeeze it. And that will leave runners at first and third. Yeah, they will give Brennan Bosch an air on that play. Brennan probably coming in. He's running on his heels. And when you run on your heels, you just don't see the ball into your glove. And... He did not watch that ball into his glove, and now Max has to pitch out of this jam. So the inning is extended. There are runners at first and third with two outs, and Michael Brantley will step in. E9 on Brennan Bosch. Brantley sends one high and deep to right field way back that ball is way gone. How costly was that. Oh man oh man. Brantley picks on the first pitch after the error and hits a three run homer. That is Brantley's first home run of this year. Boy oh boy. When it rains it pours. The inning goes on with the air and then this Indians have been aggressive already today. That's a fastball that's inside and Brantley just like the rest of the left handers in Cleveland's lineup are looking for those fastballs early in counts. Brantley had seven homers last year but as you mentioned had not homered at all this year. And also extends his hitting streak to 14 straight. Johnny Damon batting with two out bases empty now as the Indians strike for three early in this game. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Popped him up third base side. Here comes Cabrera, but he will not get there as it heads back into the dugout. 
One ball two strikes on the former Tiger Johnny Damon. Batting in the six hole in this one. Here's the one two pitch. Checked it. They will appeal. He did not go. Two balls two strikes. Little tapper hit toward first base right at Prince Fielder. And he's going to tag the bag with Scherzer standing on the bag. They get the out. Big inning though. The air is costly and it's 3 0 Cleveland. Nothing tried. Here come the Tigers in the bottom of the first. Their lineup presented by Big Boy. It's Barry Santiago and Cabrera at the top. Fielder in the middle along with Delman Young. Bosch is in right. You've got Peralta, Kelly, and Holiday rounding out the lineup for the Tigers. Jenmar Gomez is tonight presented by Fox Volkswagen of Rochester Hills. When you grade out uh, Gomez's stuff, it equates to the fact that he's not going to overpower you. Just 29 strikeouts for Jenmar in 53 innings of work to go along with 18 base on balls, but he hasn't really given up a lot of hits this year. And the 24 year old out of Caracas, Venezuela, ready to go to work. Son is bothering the left fielder, Johnny Damon. It'll be a challenge out there. He's trying to get to a spot <laughs> where the sun's not involved. You know what that's like, don't you? He's, he's still moving out there. <laughs> trying to find an area where the light standard gives him a little bit of shade. One strike on Quentin Berry starting things off for Detroit here in the first. A little chopper hit to the shortstop on his Drupal Cabrera. And Berry is out, one gone. Let's set the uh, remainder of the tribe defense here tonight. It is always presented by Tim Horton. So Damon in left, Brantley in center, Chu is in right. Kochman, Kittness, Cabrera, Chisenhall in the infield, and Carlos Santana. Is behind the plate after being the just designated hitter in last night's contest. Santiago is playing second and batting in the two hole tonight. Ramon last night, one out of three. And it looked for a second last night in the ninth inning like he might dump a single into right field to keep the game going, but Chu made a nice sliding catch to end the game. There's a strike on the outer edge, 1-1. One, one. Two made a couple of uh, nice plays in last night's game. And two, uh, not only from an offensive standpoint, but defensively, he has perked up in the last 19 games since Manny Acta has inserted him into that leadoff spot. That was the play in the ninth inning, robbing Santiago and ending the game. Since Dirks has gone down with that Achilles heel injury, 
Tigers have tried quite a few different uh, people in this number two spot. Jim just searching for the right remedy at the top of his batting order right now. It is a really good comfort for a manager to be able to kind of fit guys in certain spots in the lineup and Dirks had settled into that two spot. But it's been a mix and match since he has been out of the lineup. One and two on Santiago. High fly ball. Center field. Brantley cruising over. And Ramon is out. Two gone. Well, in case you missed it on Tigers Live earlier today, here's what happened following last night's game. A whole bunch of transactions. Omir Santos' contract was designated for assignment. Jose Ortega was called up, hard throwing a relief pitcher. Holiday catching tonight, Avila on the disabled list with the right hamstring problem. One strike on Miguel Cabrera, batting with the bases empty. Two out of four last night, had a double and an RBI. And he looks at a ball outside, 1 1. I say relief pitcher for Ortega because that's where he will pitch up here out of the bullpen. Ground ball back up the middle, but the second baseman Kipnis backhands it. Tigers go one, two, three in the first inning. Let's go to the second. Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, strength and stability since 1849. Jeep, visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by Pepperoni, dogs just know. Back here in Comerica Park, Max Scherzer is on the hill for the second. Casey Kochman leads it off. And the Indians have themselves a 3-0 lead on the home run by Michael Brantley in the first inning. It'll be Kochman, Laporta, Chisholm Hall, the bottom three for Manny Acta tonight. That sinks low and away. Two balls and no strikes. Kochman batting 213, a slick fielding first baseman. That is in there for a strike, two and one. Kochman certainly has been known more for his glove, although he's been a, a, a decent hitter at the big league level. He pops this one up. Third base side. Cabrera calling and catching. One gone. By the way, this game is available in scintillating high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD, sponsored by Xfinity from Comcast. Here is Matt Laporta with one gone here in the second. Laporta is two out of seven 
this year since being called up from Columbus, their Triple A team. And Scherzer delivers a bender in there for a strike 0 and 1. Matt Laporta is the only one in the lineup tonight against Max. The bat's right handed. Everybody else is swinging from the left side against Max. Line drive caught on a dive by Cabrera. Hey, what a play there by Miguel. Stretching out. Took a double away. Let's check out our Ford Fox mode. Jim said that he had no app issues with you know, the way that his team is going about their business as far as the energy level, how they're preparing for games. Just not winning games right now. Strike one on Lonnie Chisenhall. And at the end of the day, that really is all that matters up here. Did you win or did you lose? The 0 1. Well, Leland was asked today because he has taken a lot of the blame for the shortcomings of this team. You know, why you blame yourself, and that's exactly what he said because you're judged on wins and losses up here, period. And we've lost more than we've won. And a lot of that lays with me right now. Here's the 0 2 pitch. Bouncing in, one ball, two strikes. Chisholm Hall was hitless in last night's opener. He did score a run. 273 average here in the big leagues this year. Bouncing ball right side, deep behind the bag. Fielder has it. Shovel toss. Scherzer covers. And a 1 2 3 inning. Cabrera turning in a nice defensive play at third, helping Scherzer out. Cleveland Indians here in the bottom of the second inning. Miguel Cabrera made a nice defensive play. Victor Martinez on the bench these days has joined the ball club. Certainly not nearly ready to play, but good to see his face around. Prince Fielder leads it off. Ball one outside to Prince. I think I heard some news on Victor where he's going to have an MRI sometime in the month of June, and that will determine whether he can come back or not this year. In a couple of weeks from now, the hope is that MRI will prove that he might be able to come back. I know he's been very optimistic about perhaps playing in September. His body looks good. Looks like he's doing a lot of uh, extra weight work with his upper body. Strike call on fielder, two and one. Major piece to the puzzle last year. Really uh, did good work out of that DH spot. There's the 2 1 from Gomez. 
High fly ball, left field. That ball is hit well. Damon going back. Track wall leaps. And Johnny Damon made the catch. Are you kidding me? Oh, what a play. He took a homer away from Prince Fielder. This is a difficult play. Son, he jumps. Oh. And makes a really nice play. Really good concentration there by Johnny Damon. Not necessarily known for the way that he plays left field. 38 year old Johnny Damon, we might add. Still showing some leaping skills to rob Prince Fielder. Delman Young, the batter, and he takes a strike. One and one on Delman. Little bouncer hits slowly back up the middle. Cabrera is going to try and backhand this play, and he does for the out. Back to back outstanding plays by the Cleveland defense. Cabrera has a uh, gold glove in his future. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but he is awfully talented at that position. He made an eye popping play last night and he turns another beauty here this evening. Another barehanded play. Here's Bosch with two outs. Gomez is really getting the support of his defense early on in this game. He's working quickly, throwing strikes. One ball, one strike on Bosch. One for 15 in the homestand for Brennan, and his batting average at 226 coming in. Popped up. Third base side, Chisenhall in foul ground. And Gomez, with some help from his defense, has a quick one, two, three seconds. You're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tires. Player of the game presented by the quarter pounder with cheese using our cell phone text Tigers followed by a space then the players uniform number to three seven three three eight or if you'd like vote online at Fox Sports Still three nothing in favor of the Indians as we go to the top of number three here at the ballpark. Scherzer back to work and he's facing the top of the Cleveland lineup. Shinsu Chu leads it off then uh, Struble Cabrera and Jason Kipnis. Chu had a single back in the first and then eventually scored on the two out three run shot by Brantley. 
And be careful here if you decide to throw to a fastball. He's a very good fastball hitter. And has great numbers in his career against Max. He came in hitting 571 against Scherzer, and that went up a tick with that first inning single. That's in there a strike three and one. Choose on base percentage in the leadoff spot is 402. Here's the 3 1. Fouled away. His journey to the leadoff spot actually started last year after he came back from an injury. Maniac had just simply wanted to get him more at bats, so he put him in the leadoff spot. And Manny kind of realized that he was getting on base a lot, and so this year he put him back up there to try and get some more runs and more offense going. Ooh, look out, looked like he hurt himself on that swing. Foul ball came up and bit him. Manny Actors Club was struggling offensively at the beginning of the year. They were winning some games, but offensively they really weren't uh, clicking on all cylinders. So he moved Chu to the leadoff spot, moved Brantley down. Now Kipnis is batting third. And he got him, strike three. Chu is punched out. First strikeout for Max. Let's go to the studio now. Time for a game break with Justin White. All right, Justin, thank you. The Yanks came in a half game back in the American League East. And that battle will, I would think, go down to the uh, later portions of this season. Whoever pitches the best down the stretch is going to win that division. There's no debate about that. And that really goes for every division. Tigers right now struggling offensively, struggling mightily really all year long. But if they get the pitching sorted out in the Starters start going out there and they start winning a bunch of games. Some of the offense that shows up will be enough to win some games. No doubt. There's the 1 1 outside. But you don't always want your pitchers out there uh, feeling like, you know what, I'm not getting any run support, so they're trying too hard not to give up runs. And that's when you give up runs in bunches. Here's the 2 1. Two and two on a scribble Cabrera. Flight out his first time up. They signed Cabrera to a two year extension this past April. And why not with the glove that he brings to the ballpark every night? That in the fact that last year he really busted out with a nice offensive season. He drove in 92 runs last year. Uh, he was one of the top offensive performers at his position in all of baseball. Three and two on Cabrera. Swing and a miss. And Scherzer has back to back strikeouts here in the third. Both of his strikeouts have come on mid 90s fastballs around the belt buckle as well. Every single pitch there to Cabrera was outside, with the exception of the second pitch. He bounced the changeup. Here is Kipnis with two away. Ball one. Kipnis a fly out to center field. Way outside, two and oh. Kipnis now is 0 for 11 and 0 for 5 in the series. Here is Scherzer's 2 0. Outside, three balls, no strikes. Max coming into this one had beaten the Indians three straight times, dating back to last June. And he missed it outside, ball four. Two out base runner, and that'll keep it going now for Carlos Santana. Kipnis, uh, one of the last guys on Cleveland's club that you would want to walk with two outs. Uh, he has been successful on 13 of 14 
of his steal attempts this year. He'll be looking to get down to second base at some point in time. Santana had the big at bat in that first inning reaching on an error by the right fielder Brendan Bosch that kept the inning going and Brantley then followed with a home run. To give the tribe their three nothing lead. Swing and a miss and a big rip there by Santana. Max might be on to something here tonight. A lot of his fastballs have been above the belt buckle at 95, and a lot of the left handers, they can't catch up to that pitch. Left handers love the ball down, but have a difficult time of climbing the ladder to get to a mid 90s fastball. Ground ball right side. There's Santiago to make the play, and the inning is over. When we come back, we'll talk with David Chad, Vice President of Amateur Scouting, in a moment. And David Chad, the vice president of amateur scouting for the Detroit Tigers, uh, joins us this half inning. The scouting uh, department has to, I guess, finally take a breath today, David. I don't know <laughs> if you guys are ever totally relaxing, but the uh, the draft is done for this year. Give us, I guess, an overview of going into this thing where you felt you might be and how you came out of it. Well, it was a different year this year with the new CBA and the parameters involved with that. But uh, I got to tell you, I was telling Dave before I came up here, in all my drafts as scouting director, I felt like we've we did an excellent job this year. I know you always feel good about your drafts right after, but this year I thought we did an excellent job. And this year again, David, you guys were pitching heavy. Your first pick was uh, Jake Thompson, a high schooler out of Texas. Let's start by talking about him a little bit. Well, he's a power right-handed pitcher, uh, 6'4", 220. Uh, his arsenal's fastball is 90-94. He's got a devastating slider, and he throws strikes. And he uh, walks around the mound with that typical Texas swagger. <laughs> Peralta hits a ground ball to short. There's Cabrera on the backhand, and one gone. He's got a little swagger too. that Cabrera that shortstop for Cleveland. He makes a lot of really nice plays. Hey David you, you brought up the CBA the new CBA as far as baseball is concerned. I noticed that picks four through 16 were all college kids. Did that play into the way that you took some of the players. You know I think it looks that way but it really didn't Rod. I mean we went high school one two and then we went college but we still line up by ability and uh, the dynamics of the new CBA obviously played somewhat of a role in this year's draft but it certainly didn't deter us from development of draft and talent first and foremost in any draft for for, the, for us and Detroit Tiger organization we're drafting talent. Don Kelly the batter here as we talk with David Chad the vice president of amateur scouting for the Tigers and David there's a, a bit of a, a new twist this year in that you've got to get your guys signed by what July 15th this year July 15th uh, in years past it go typically to August 15th and you know what that does it allows me at least to enjoy half the summer. <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. And Gomez facing Kelly here with one out. And that's lifted back out of play. David, not only do you still work on the scouting side, but you're an assistant to 
uh, the general manager here, David Dombrowski. What are your roles with David when you're not out watching some of the amateur players? Well, basically my role now is I spend a lot of time, all the time in spring training, and I'll go between the major league side and the minor league side. I worked hand in hand with Dave Owen. Um, whatever he may need from me from a scouting perspective, I'm there to allow to give my advice to him. Uh, and I do what any good employee does, whatever Dave needs, I do. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's a variety for me that I like. Uh, I get to spend a lot of time on the professional side as well as uh, the amateur side. One of the names that constantly comes up when people talk about Tigers prospects is Nick Castellanos and certainly I think is probably at the top of your list or near the top of your list of prospects. He was recently elevated in the minor league system. What can you tell us about his progress. Well I think he's doing outstanding uh, where he is as a hitter is, is in, the, in the strides he's made has been tremendous from an offensive standpoint. Uh, he still has some work to do from a defensive perspective but he's getting better. Uh, and as any scout will tell you, we're looking for tools. And Nick Castellanos has tools with the size and the makeup to go along with. Chatting with David Chad here, who is the vice president of amateur scouting for the Tigers. Kelly, meanwhile, puts a charge into this one. And it looks like it's going to go, and it does. How about Don Kelly? He has been sick for about a week now. He really hasn't been able to eat. He told me today he lost 10 pounds and really only ate a banana and some yogurt today. Amazing. That's all you had for lunch, too, right, right? You're right. You're going to let me say it. Say it. I see you, Don. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love that. I love that. My, how far we've fallen. <laughs> I love it. He said it. <laughs> Donnie Kelly with a home run, putting the Tigers on the board. Three to one is our score. And Holiday sends a ground ball to third. Chisenhall will make the play, and that's out number two. Hey, the question that most fans have. Obviously, second base has been a troublesome spot the last couple of years. We really haven't had one consistently since Polanco left. Castellanos does not play second base, nor do you think he will be able to play second base at this level, do you? No, I don't see him as a second baseman. Now, there may be some opinions out there that might disagree with that, but I don't. I, I see him as a third baseman, and uh, we're going to continue to develop him as a third baseman and as an offensive player. Could he translate into the outfield? Possibly. 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 Quentin Berry is the batter now with two outs. A run in on the Kelly home run. Making it three to one, and Berry looks at a strike. 0 and 1. Well, when do you guys start preparing for next year, or have you already started doing that? Believe me, we were just in a meeting now. We're talking about summer showcases, Amazing. talking about events we need to get to on right now. Um, our scouts are getting prepared as we speak for next year's draft. That's a nice play up the middle by Cabrera. David, we appreciate you taking time. Thanks very much. Congratulations on a great draft. Good luck next year, I suppose. Well, thanks for having me. All right. it. David Chan, the vice president Thank of you. amateur scouting for the Tigers. Back with more. It's 3-1 to one now, Cleveland.
is brought to you by Arby's. RBQ lovers rejoice. The RBQ sandwich is back at Arby's. Get yours today. And by Columbia Pictures movie, That's My Boy, starring Adam Sandler and Andy Samberg in theaters June 15th. You were saying that you liked that uh, RBQ sandwich, weren't you? I love the RBQ. Yeah. I love when summer rolls around because the RBQ is coming back. Well, the Tigers are getting back into this game, at least on the home run by Don Kelly. It's now 3-1. to one. And Michael Brantley leads it off. Our thanks again to David Chad, the vice president of amateur scouting for the Tigers, filling us in on what apparently was a really good draft this year. The Tigers feel good about it. And hopefully we'll be seeing some of those young men in the big league sometime soon. David Chad has done wonderful work uh, as a scout. Uh, whether it be with the Boston Red Sox or here with the Tigers when he was with Boston. He drafted guys like John Lester. Jonathan Papelbon. Dustin Pedroia. So he's drafted some really good players. Big timers. And of course here you start talking about guys like Porcello and Jacob Turner. Avila. It is Brantley Damon and Kochman here in the top of the fourth three to one in favor of Cleveland. That's fouled back out of play. Well Brantley homered back in the first inning he is batting fifth tonight and uh, he really hasn't given all that much when he's in the leadoff slot but lower in the lineup like fifth. He's awfully awfully good. Yeah that on base percentage under 300 for a leadoff hitter is not really good. And apparently just feels a little bit more comfortable lowering the lineup. He has batted anywhere from fifth to sixth to seventh. Has quite a few extra base hits this year. Now the 3 2 pitch. Bouncing ball up the middle right at Johnny Peralta, who is stationed perfectly. One out of the fourth. Gonna bring up Johnny Damon. Damon grounded out his first time. He was back in the first inning. He also robbed Prince Fielder of a home run. Leaping catch out and left. Damon looks at a strike call. Johnny now with 2,739 hits. Third among all actives. We just saw the active leader earlier with New York coming to town and Derek Jeter. One ball, one strike. And Derek uh, showing no signs of uh, letting up. Awkward swing there by Damon. Now Jeter having one of his better years. Here's a one two. Checked it outside. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the two two pitch out of the way. And it's outside. Three balls, two strikes. Johnny Damon began his big league career at the age of 21 with the Royals back in 1995. And here he is now at the age of 38. Still in the major leagues. Quite a career. And he walked him. He works the base on balls. Hey fans, don't forget you can spend Father's Day at Comerica Park. The Tigers play the Colorado Rockies June 17th at 105. All kids 14 and under receive a powder blue wristband for tickets. Call 866. 6 6 Tiger or visit <laughs> Tigers.com. Our day is coming in a couple of weeks. It is. I can't wait. Here's Kotchman. He looks at a ball inside. Max now, by the way, has gone to a three ball count in five of the last six hitters he's faced. Kotchman popped up back in the second 0 for 1. Time called now. You know what else I noticed about David Chad? What is that? He has a tremendous voice. Oh, are you kidding me? He I, could bump either one of us out of our chair. I tell him that all the time. 
Pitch count on Max 58. Here's the 1 0. Lifted back out of play, 1 1. I stayed at the uh, same hotel down in Lakeland, Florida with uh, David Chad and also the assistant general manager, uh, Al Avila. And boy, can you get a lot of information. I mean, you ask them all the questions, they give you all the answers about the big league roster, the minor league kids. Had a good time spending with those two gentlemen down there. They're good at what they do. Here's the 1 1. Fouled back out of play, one and two. Scherzer gave up the three run shot in the first, but nothing since. He has walked a couple of batters in the interim. Kochman waiting on a one two offering. And the runner goes outside. Holiday's throw is late. It's a stolen base. Throw was on target. But a tad late. Damon able to steal. Damon has stolen a lot of bases in his big league career. He got a pretty good jump, but I really like the exchange by Holiday. He had to reach out and then pull the ball back to the throwing hand, but he made a very strong, accurate throw down the second base. Great shot right there. So Damon now in scoring position. And the 2 2. Way outside, 3 and 2. Kochman last year had a nice year for Tampa at 306, 10 home runs. Wherever he has gone, and he's played with several different organizations, the Angels, Boston, Atlanta, Seattle, he has brought his glove with him. A 998 lifetime fielding percentage at first base. And it's driven down the right field line. That ball is hit well, and that ball is gone. He brought his bat with him today, too. Line drive, two run homer. That's a pretty good approach there by Kochman. With two strikes, he knew that he had to be short and quick to the ball, which he was. And he got a 95 mile power fastball from Max, and he drilled it. Look how short he is with the swing. Direct to the baseball. The Tigers got a run back on the Kelly homer, but the Indians add two on the Kochman home run. Here's Matt Laporta. Ball one to Laporta. Home run number four on the season for Kochman. He has 19 RBIs. Swing and a miss. Laporta started the season in the minor leagues. The Indians went out and signed Kochman in the offseason, which I guess pretty much was writing on the wall for Laporta that they wanted to get the veteran in camp. Still not convinced that Matt can do the job full time here at the big league level. Matt has no problem putting up really good numbers and down in Triple A. One and two. And but those numbers haven't made the transition to everyday big league life. Here's a one two pitch. Foul straight back. 5 1 Indians lead. Two run shot here by Casey Kochman in the fourth. Second home run tonight for the tribe. In the air to right field on a line right at Bosch. Two gone. And that leaves it up to the number nine hitter, Chisholm Hall. Temperature still in the upper 70s here tonight. 77 degrees on a really picture perfect evening here. 
Tigers starting to wind down the home stand. Foul back out of play. All for one for Chisholm Hall. He also started the year in the minor leagues. Their Triple A team in Columbus and was hitting 324 there. Bouncing ball right side. Santiago gobbles it up. Chisholm Hall is out. Inning is over. Not before Kochman hits a two run shot. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Live, you probably saw me wearing one of the pause masks that the kids are getting tomorrow. I found much more suitable kids to be wearing them because kids 14 and under tomorrow are going to get these masks. You guys like them, right? Yeah, they're not very chatty. We've got twins over here, Ethan and Evan, and Colin. And his sister Grace just walked away, she didn't want to wear the mask anymore, you guys. But pretty cool prize for the kids coming to the game tomorrow 14 and under. All the kids can come, it's a one o'clock game, so. They might be even missing school and getting a treat with these masks. Oh. Are you and Rod? All right. Jack. I can bring them up if you want to wear them. <laughs> I don't know. You no, know, my goal is to have Rod Allen wear one of those on camera. I thought Shannon looked pretty good in hers earlier. <laughs> she did. She looked really good. Good job, you guys. <laughs> they look really good on the kids. There's no doubt. 105 start tomorrow. Be here. That young guy didn't want to take his off. What do you say, Rob? Will you put one on? Negative. That's what I thought. <laughs> Nor do I blame you. <laughs> it's supposed to be 14 and under, but you're still a kid at heart. I don't qualify. Yeah, you're a kid at heart. 0 and 2. Uh, and Santiago starting things off here in the bottom of the fourth against Jenmar Gomez. Pulled foul. Here's what Shannon looked like. She's all in. Yeah, but it's kind of small, though. <laughs> That's why oh, 14 and up. <laughs> exactly right. The 0 2 is going to bounce in 1 and 2 the count. Tigers have Santiago, Cabrera, and Fielder here in the fourth inning, down 5 to 1 now. A couple of homers for Cleveland in this game. Ramon fly to center field his first time, 0 for 1. And a bouncing ball right side, gloving there. Kochman flips to the pitcher covering. One gone. How about we bring you our AT&T trivia question right now? Here it is. What former Tiger on this day in 1990 hit three home runs against the Indians in a 6-4 win? This day in 1990 went deep three times against the Indians. Here's Miguel Cabrera. The only blemish on the mark of 
Mr. Gomez tonight. The home run by Don Kelly back in the third. High fly ball right field. He got a hold of this one to the wall goes Chu leaping and he can't get it. It's out of here at Appleton Field home run. Two ball game. Looked like Miguel got an 88 mile power cut fastball that was away from him from Gomez and stayed down through it. And when Miguel hits the ball the opposite way, one of the few right handers in this game that has the kind of power. Uh, to reach the seats in that direction with regularity. Prince Fielder had a home run taken away by Johnny Damon on a leaping catch. Cabrera though made sure his left the building for Miguel number 12. That's a little bit outside 2 and 0 on Fielder. Ball starting to carry pretty well here at Comerica Park as the weather starts to warm up a little bit. Definitely makes a difference. Mid 70s tonight. Lifted back out of play. Two and one on the Prince. Fielder trying to extend his hitting streak, which right now stands at 12 in a row. His career high is 17. He's done that a couple of times. Way outside. Three and one. Delman Young waiting on deck. Tigers continue to hit solo home runs. Two more of them tonight. And he walked him. Of the 54 home runs hit by the Tigers this year, 35 have been solo shots. That's a high number. Here's Delman Young. And really, Rod, I don't know how you interpret that stat. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it's not like you can just wait for guys to get on and then hit home runs. I mean, they're hit out when they're hit out. You just hope there are some guys on base. Here's the 1 0. Delman backs out of there. Two balls, no strikes. And Santana wants time. Something else that has been very disturbing this year with the Tigers team is how they've played here at Comerica Park. Usually, the last few years, they were really able to protect home court advantage, but in their last 21 games here, they've only won seven. Whoa. Well, they are three under 500 at home. Two and zero on Delman Young, and that is off the glove of the third baseman Chisholm Hall. He'll still get one at second, and not in time at first. There appeared to be a little bit of contact here between Santiago and. Jenmar Gomez when Santiago was trying to beat out uh, that infield single well not necessarily trying to beat it out but apparently that didn't feel all that good to Gomez. I'm really wondering if that's bothering him at all here in the fourth inning. Bosch looks at ball one. Nice play by Chisenhall to knock that ball down hit off the bat of Delman and then alertly still get the out at second base keep the runner out of scoring position. 5 2 Indians lead. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Tap right in front of the plate. That's a fair ball. And Bosch will be thrown out by the catcher, Santana. Tiger settled for one in the home run by Cabrera.
his own injuries. The Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on the Indians. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. And here are a couple of guys, Rod, that certainly have been critical to their success in the past that have been hurting. Well, Havner was in the lineup when they swept the Tigers in the Tigers' first visit to Progressive Field a couple of weeks ago, but now he is down with a knee injury. And Sizemore really hasn't been healthy the last four years. So the Tigers aren't the only club that is dealing with a number of injuries. I will say this much. The Tigers probably have more injuries than most. But they're not the only team dealing with injuries. Shinsu Chu is starting things off. Top of the lineup for the Indians here in the fifth. Chu Cabrera Kipnis. Shin Su a single and a strikeout in this one against Max Scherzer. There's a 1 1. Swing and a miss. 1 and 2 on Chu. Just off the plate outside. Talking about Holiday catching tonight for Max. Rod, do you think it's a case tonight of the pitcher leading the catcher instead of the other way around? I think so. The 2 2 outside. Although uh, Jeff Jones has given Holiday a, a scouting report today and a game plan for Max to follow, impossible for him to remember everybody. And so Max has to remember uh, some of the guys he's had success against. That one might find a seam, and it does into center field. And Chu is one of those guys he has had no success against, really, in his career. <laughs> Velocity never an issue with Max. He's already been up to 98 miles an hour, 84 with a changeup. We thank Xfinity for those. Uh, readings on Max. Chu, by the way, is now 10 for 17 against Max. Career. Here is Asdrubal Cabrera. Popped up foul back out of play. Cabrera is one of those guys that even though Chu is on first base and has the ability to steal, he still looks for that first pitch, pitch fastball. He's very aggressive on that pitch. Silver Slugger Award for the shortstop position last year with his 92 RBIs. We we're talking about Manny Actas lineup and him moving two to the leadoff spot. Last time we saw Cabrera, he was batting third. Kipnis was batting second, so he continues to move guys around as to how they're swinging the bat at that particular time. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. And Kipnis has done well in the three spot. Cabrera last night had a triple and an RBI. And he's batting 349 with men in scoring position. Top of the order doing a decent job for Manny Acta. Here's the 0 2. Outside, one ball, two strikes. The Indians have already tried to run once on Holiday. They were successful. Damon stole a base back in the fourth. And if you're the Indians about right now, you have to be thinking that there might be a breaking ball here or change up from Max, and that would allow Chu to get a really good jump from first base. Hunter holds this time, and it's in the dirt. Blocked by Holiday. Chu let it off with a single here in the fifth. The 2 2. Ground ball, base hit, right field. Chu will hit the bag at second. He's going to try and get the third. 
And Bosch's throw will be late, and the Indians now have runners at first and third. Nobody out. And not only that, they have their number three hitter coming up. Uh, you can see the grip. It's a change-up grip by Max, and Cabrera goes down and get one and hit it right back uh, past Prince. And, and Chu really didn't need any help from Steve Smith, uh, the third base coach, to tell him whether he could get to third or not. Kipnis a walk and a fly ball. The Indians now have five hits. They lead five to two. Little number hit slowly. Here's Peralta has only one play and he is saved at first base. And a run will score. Infield hit and an RBI for Jason Kipnis. I didn't uh, realize that Kipnis had some speed. I told you about his steals this year. 13 of them. And he just did beat this. Barely. Man, you talk about hitting the front of the bag. And he almost missed it. So the Indians now lead 6 2. Still nobody out in this inning. And you've got your number four hitter up there, Carlos Santana. There's a strike. Six runs on six hits for Cleveland. Santana reaching out an air in the first and scoring a run. It's fouled back out of play. There is some action in the bullpen. Dwayne Belo is the left hander. Luis Marte is the right hander. Dwayne Belo pitched two innings in last night's game. Very effectively too. Runner bluffing off the bag at second. Slow roller hit to the right side. Scherzer paddles it. Stays with it though, and they will get Santana. That'll advance the runners. It's a good thing Santana didn't hit that ball towards shortstop because Santana, excuse me, Peralta was over towards second base trying to prevent. A Cabrera from stealing third. So we'll see what the Tigers do with the infield here. They're already down 6 2. You've got Brantley up there. Looks like they're going to put him on. He'll be walked intentionally. If there was a time where Jim would be a little afraid to do this with Max on the mound. But we told you Max in his last six starts total. He's only walked eight batters. So Jim very comfortable uh, playing this the way that he should. And that's to try to get a force at any base or possibly get a double play ball to get out of the inning. This will be the third walk of the night for Max. But this one obviously intentional here. And really since that seven walk game against the Yankees he has corralled the base on balls. Now they're loaded up. And it's going to bring up Johnny Damon. Indians lead 6 2, bases loaded, one out. Damon a walk, a stolen base, and a run scored back in the fourth. And he looks at strike one. Damon came in batting just a buck eighty. He slices this one foul down the left field line on two. Damon's career 380 lifetime with the bases loaded. 
He has hit six grand slams, but he is down in the count here, 0 and 2. Max wants his catcher Holiday to come out to the mound. Told you earlier that Holiday told me that the only time that he's ever caught Max Scherzer was in spring training this year, and that was not in the game. Uh, it was a bullpen session. Is there there still is something to be gained by that though isn't there you can get an idea of you know what the pitches are doing or how they're moving. Slice to left center field that's a base hit. Cabrera scores here comes Kipnis he'll score throw to third not in time. Meanwhile Damon goes to second and an 0 2 pitch is sliced by Johnny Damon to knock in two more. A couple of mistakes there one by Max giving up the base hit on the 0 2 pitch which got way too much plate for Johnny Damon and then. That's a ball where Kelly probably should come up and throw the ball to second base to keep the double play in order. We're going to show you all three of these pitches. He gets ahead of him, but then the 0 2 pitch just way too much play. It's our bell tire pitch by pitch. Eight runs on seven hits in this game for the Indians, signaling the end for Max Scherzer. The Tigers go to the bullpen. It's a wall side windows pitching change, and we'll be back. For the Indians, they are still threatening here with runners at second and third, one out. Dwayne Belo comes out of the bullpen to face Casey Kochman. Infield is in for Detroit, and Belo misses inside, one and zero. Oh. Dwayne came on in the seventh inning last night, pitched two frames, he faced six batters and got all six of them. Kochman drilled a line drive home run back in the fourth. And he pops this one up. Right side of the infield foul ground. And it's Santiago and the runners have to hold. <laughs> Dwayne Beadle has done marvelous work this year out of that Tigers bullpen. Inherited runners only two of 13 have scored this year when Beadle has taken over. 19 strikeouts, only three walks. Dwayne has also retired 14 of the 17 first batters that he has faced. And that last out was a sizable one. As Laporta stands in now, two away, infield is back. And he sends a chop to third base. Cabrera waits on the hop, and his throw is in time to retire the side. So Bilo again comes out of the bullpen and quiets things down.
Nebraska Stars battle for home field advantage in the Fall Classic. The road to the World Series begins with the 2012 MLE All-Star Game Tuesday, July 10th at 7.30 p.m. on Fox. Well, Paws is getting out there and voting. You should, too. Send your Tigers to the All-Star Game. First pitch line to right field, slicing away from Chu. Not going to get it. It'll go up against the wall. Johnny Peralta leading things off with a stand-up double. Johnny's had a nice series, his third hit. Johnny's starting to get it together. Uh, he has finally stopped trying to pull everything. He is staying on the baseball a little bit better, much better balance. Therefore, lots of hits the opposite way. And if you continue to hit the ball the opposite way with the regularity that he has lately, sooner or later the pitchers are going to try to crowd you, and then Johnny can play some long ball to left field. But first you have to earn that. And he's starting to earn it. Single and two doubles in the series now for Peralta as Don Kelly stands in. Solo shot back in the third, his first home run of this campaign. Here's the 1 0 from Gomez. Popped him up. Behind home plate, Santana waiting for it. One going. The pitcher, Brian. Here's the Farmers Insurance report card tonight. Mr. Brian Holiday making his big league debut. And the players from the 2010 draft to reach the major leagues. Of course, Bryce Harper, Cole Calhoun of the Angels recently getting called to the big leagues, and Brian Holiday of the Tigers. Six Not many of them. Not at all. Brian picked in the sixth round in 2010. Have you been watching much, much of uh, what Bryce Harper? Has been able to do. It's kind of yeah. hard not to. Really. Yeah, it's hard not to follow. The 1 0. A walk off hit his recent uh, exploits. What a special talent at age 19. One ball, one strike on Brian Holiday. Line drive to left field. That's going to be a base hit. And they will hold Peralta at third base. First major league hit for Brian Holiday. Get that man that baseball. Gene Lamont's got it. Pass to Verlander. Kevin Rand will take it next. That's the protocol. The trainers always get him. Got himself a nice little fastball right down the middle about belt buckle high and you know, that is one that he will remember for the remainder of his life. Solid single to left. Kevin Rand will take it back in the clubhouse for safekeeping. Barry looks at ball one. It's smothered by Santana. A couple of ground balls for Quentin Barry. Gomez now has surrendered four hits. Tigers trying again to chip away. They're down 8 2 in the fifth. Hugh uh, giving himself a chance tonight with the ground balls. He can use his legs. Last night he flew out three times, a couple of times to the center fielder, once uh, to the left fielder. That's not part of Quentin's game. Line drive. Fair ball. Inside the back at third. That'll get a run in. Holiday coming to third base. He will stop there. Barry has a double and an RBI. 8 3 ball game. No shot here for Chisholm Hall. He's already playing in very shallow because he respects the bunning ability of. Quentin Barry and he had no shot at getting that baseball. Five Tigers hits. Barry gets his fifth RBI. Here's Santiago. Ground ball to short. That'll get the run in and Ramon is out. Score Holiday on the play. The Tigers get a couple of runs back.
Packers have had some contributions from a ton of guys this year. You don't expect to have to dip into your minor league system as much as they've had to in the first two months of the year. But that is the hand that they've been dealt. 8 4 ball game, and Cabrera a chance to drive one in. Cabrera went the other way with a solo home run back in the fourth. Inside almost hit him. Here is the Mazda scouting report. Most hits in the American League since May 14th. Fielder in Cabrera right there at the top of the list. Mark Trumbull, a couple of big flies in last night's game for the Angels. Mike Trout is also on that list. When you were talking about Bryce Harper. There's a, a debate going on right now. Who is the best young player in baseball? Is it Harper or Trout? Hard to choose. It is. One and two on Miguel Cabrera. Two runs back for the Tigers. They're down 8-4. On his way to second. He's in with a two out, two base hit. Tigers coming alive. It's 8 5. Tigers have had some pretty good approaches in this inning. The latest by Cabrera. It's a fastball that Gomez tries to get outside, and Cabrera able to really concentrate on pulling his hands through the strike zone, and he barrels it up. Uh, pretty good, but Quinton also went the other way, and Peralta got a base hit the other way as well. The Indians gave Janmark Gomez an 8 2 lead in this one. It's now 8 5. Scott Radinsky, their pitching coach, having a chat on the hill. Quinton Berry doubled one in in this inning. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lights. Big night for Cabrera double homer two RBIs. Now we'll see if Prince can draw the Tigers even closer. Swing and a miss. He left the strike zone there. Indians scored three in the top of this inning. Tigers answer with three of their own. Outside, one ball, one strike. Two and one. It appeared Fielder was going to hit one out his first time up, but Johnny Damon made a leaping catch over the left field wall to pull it back. Gomez, uh, excuse me, really hasn't given him anything to hit in the three pitches he's thrown. He walked him his last time, and there's a line drive to left. That's a base hit. Cabrera coming around. They're going to try and score him, and they will. Prince Fielder with an RBI single. The Tigers now down by just two. Won't really get a chance to see whether this was a ball or a strike until we show you a replay. But I'm sure Scott Radinsky, the pitching coach, told Gomez, pitch around fielder. You got an open base. And look at Prince. He's one of those guys that's an RBI machine. He knew the situation. And this is where really good run producers, they expand their strike zone. Look how far that ball was outside. 
and he's still able to drive that run in. That's line to third to finally end the inning. Delman is out, but the Tigers send eight men to the plate. They score four times. It's a ball game again. This game down 8 2 at one point. It's now 8 6. Cabrera helping to lead the charge back. He's had a couple of RBIs in this game. And we have a new pitcher now for the Tigers. It'll be right hander Luis Marte. It's going to be very important for Marte to pull up a couple of put up a couple of zeros uh, in the runs column for this Cleveland Indians team and allow the Tigers to get themselves back into the game totally. There has been a little bit of a momentum switch to the Detroit Tigers side. In this game, and how big were the two outs that Belo got? Because there were runners at second and third when he came in, and he kept it right there. Huge. So he'll turn the baseball over to Marte. Here's that AT&T trivia question again tonight: What former Tiger, on this day in 1990, hit three homers versus Cleveland in a 6-4 win? That would be Cecil Fielder. That was his second game with three homers that season. So here come the Indians now as we go to the top of the sixth and Marte will take over. Chisholm Hall leads it off then Chu and then Cabrera. And he pops him up. Foul ground Holiday discards the mask one pitch one out. Here is Shinsu Chu now with one away. Marte in his time in the minor leagues with the Tigers and it started back in 2006. Was just about a strikeout per inning. Chu has a couple of hits a couple of runs scored. In there for strike one. Marte had a great spring made the team out of spring training. And he suffered a hamstring injury which landed him on the disabled list. Chu shoots one down the left field line that'll get in there base hit maybe more. Let's see Kelly cuts it off. Shinsu is on his way to second the throw not in time. One on double. Doubles are made out of the batter's box and that's exactly what Chu was thinking when he hit that baseball the opposite way Kelly got over there and was able to cut it off but most of his momentum was uh, carrying him backwards and he really wasn't able to get anything on the throw still made it a very close play however eighth hit tonight for the Indians and Gene Lamont gets right back on the old telephone.
in there for strike one on Asdrubal Cabrera. And Marte not throwing as hard here tonight as he had been throwing in his first few outings in the big leagues. His fastball 93 94. He's got a really good changeup. Outstanding changeup, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Phil Coke is heating up. Strike call, no one, too. You can't have enough left handers in your bullpen when you go up against uh, the Cleveland Indians. Eight of their starting players in the game tonight swing left handed. And they don't even have Hafner available. That's low. One ball, two strikes. Single for three for Cabrera. He has hit safely in eight straight. There's always been a lot of really good left handed hitters in the AL Central. You mentioned Hafner, but back when Sizemore was playing as well. The Eminem boys in Minnesota. Line drive, right field line. It's down a base hit. That'll get another run in. Chu coming around to score. And Cabrera, who is down on the count 0 2, singles on a 1 2 pitch to make it 9 6. I don't know if it's uh, their two strike approach or if it's some of these balls that are being left over the heart of the dish that are allowing them to really barrel them up nicely with two strikes. It's got to be a little of both. There's Kipnis. Strike one. Nine runs, nine hits now for Cleveland. Six runs, seven hits for Detroit. He's showing bunts. One ball, one strike. Kipnis has that odd batting stance. He admits it's kind of goofy looking. Those are his words. But he was messing around in the cage one day. And uh, he started doing this. Felt comfortable to him. The 1 1. Two balls, one strike. It's almost like uh, Mickey Tettleton, who wore a Tigers uniform back in the day. Good comparison. Tettleton had crazy power, though. Foul back. Two and two. Cleveland in this game has had five two strike hits in this game, five of their nine. And a big one by Cabrera extends the lead to 9 6 for the Indians. And foul tip into the glove. So Kipnis is out of there. Well, we have a chance back to the studio. We go game break time with Justin White. All right, Justin, thank you. Here, more of a slugfest. It's nine to six. Big, big swing by Carlos Santana. 0 and 1. Santana reaching on an air, which turned out to be huge in that first inning. It would have been the third out. It kept the inning going, and then Brantley homered. Fouled off. 0 and 2 the count. Carlos Santana was at one time a very highly regarded prospect in the Dodgers organization. Cleveland traded Casey Blake to get him. And what a trade that has turned out to be for Cleveland. Santana, major part of the Cleveland future. Well, I'm sure they were holding their breath a couple of years ago as a rookie when he tore up his knee on a play at the plate. That was ugly. He got into a collision at home plate with Ryan Kalish of the Boston Red Sox. Came back from the surgery. Had a good year last year, power wise. And a bouncing ball knocked down by Marte. 
He'll have time to make the play. And the inning is over. They get a run though, and we'll go to the bottom of the six. in Brendan Bosch's swing and setup which will probably allow him to start to have a little bit more success. I noticed this little something different. Take a look at Bosch's hands here on both of these. The one on the left there that's when Brendan Bosch was really going well last year. They brought out some of that video. The one on the right there is where he's been struggling lately. You can see the hands a little bit higher there when he's been struggling this year. Now let's run the video. The outstanding swing here on the left side. Head is down. Legs are firm. He's hitting up against a very firm front side and hits this ball very hard the opposite way. Really good concentration. Take a look now at this year. Brendan Bosch much more aggressive with that front shoulder. You can see violently pulling off the baseball. You can see his arms flexing there. A lot of aggression there. He pulls off this one and he grounds out. So just a really minor adjustment that Brendan needs to make. And once he makes these adjustments, he'll get a whole lot better. Well, Bosch will be leading things off here in the bottom of the six. It'll be Bosch, Peralta, and Kelly, and the Tigers will do it against the new pitcher. Sometimes it could be the smallest thing. And the thing that I noticed most from that video was where his hands were. And when he would start on this year, his hands would go behind his head, which makes it longer for him to get to the baseball. So uh, let's hope he gets it going here. Tony Sip is your new pitcher for the Indians. Elevated numbers this year for Sip, but the last few years he's been tremendous out of that uh, Cleveland Indians bullpen. He is averaging over a strikeout an inning. It'll be Bosch, Peralta, Kelly. Tigers down three here in the sixth, and Sip misses high, 1 0. Appears to be a wise decision by Manny Acta to get Jinmar Gomez out of the game after the. Tigers tacked a four spot on him in the fifth and they've scored six runs on him in the last three innings. Bosch out in front pops it up foul back out of play. One ball one strike on Brennan who tonight is a pop up and he tapped one in front of the plate and was thrown out by Santana. The skies as you can see here are looking very ominous. No rain though. To this point, here's the one-one swing and a miss. One and two. You don't mind this swing; it's an aggressive swing, and that's exactly what they want to see Brendan do. They want to see him let it go. They don't want him feeling for the baseball. Little tapper back to the mound. Sip with the underhand toss. And Bosch is over three. One out here in the sixth. So the struggles continue for Bosch. Now one for his last 18. Here's Johnny Peralta who got that fifth inning jump started with a two base hit the other way. 
And over his last 10 now, Peralta hitting 313. Ball one from Sip. Single and two doubles in the series for Peralta against his former team. Here's the 1 0. Fouled off. One ball, one strike. Well, the amateur draft just completed today, and uh, it's always fun to see guys that were drafted real deep get to the big leagues. Tony Sip qualifies, selected in the 45th round back in 2004. There's a whole lot of guys drafted before Sip. You want to know how many? Over a thousand. 1,337. And quite a few of those guys are watching Sip pitching in the big leagues. And the 1 1. Swing and a miss. One and two on Peralta. Don Kelly waiting on deck. Swing and a miss, and Peralta goes down. Sip has retired the first two in the inning. Well, time now for the Ace Hardware Scott's fan poll question of the game with interleague play looming. The question tonight is quite simple Do you like interleague play? Is it A, yes, or B, no? To enter your vote, text ACE followed by a space, then the letter answer to 37338. Final results post game on Tigers Live. I like it. Can't wait to see Joey Bottle on Friday in Cincinnati. Also, that kid Chapman, their closer, going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he's good. I would also venture to say that. Cincinnati fans are kind of getting forward or looking forward to seeing Justin Verlander who will pitch on Saturday. No doubt about that. Hitters aren't looking forward to that, but the fans <laughs> are. <laughs> True. There's a line drive sinking in left field, but caught by Johnny Damon. And it's a one, two, three inning to the seventh inning we march. We check out the Comerica game summary. The Tigers, 35 of their 54 home runs this season, are solo shots. Miguel Cabrera, 27 multi hit games. He has a multi hit game tonight. Shinsu, two, three out of four with a double and three runs scored. The Indians, at one time, led eight to two. It's now nine to six. And look at that cutie. What is she eating? Pizza? Sunglasses turned upside down. <laughs> it's nice and cloudy. She doesn't need them. <laughs> That's a gorgeous shot right there. Yes, it is. Phil Coke is the new pitcher now for Detroit. Well, he's scheduled to see three left-handers here in the top half of the seventh. Brantley first, 
and then Damon and then Kochman unless a Manny Acta decides to pinch hit for someone. So the youngster Holiday now is out to chat really quickly with Phil Coke. Brantley to start things off pre run shot in the first intentionally walked in the fifth. Average of 285. Brantley's three run homer extended his hitting streak to 14 straight. Wasn't too long ago that Michael Brantley's average was in the 250 range. Here's the 1 0. And that's back out of play. One ball, one strike on Michael Brantley. This is the longest hitting streak by an Indian since Brantley had a 19 gamer late in the 2010 season. Here's the 1 1. Fought that one off 1 and 2 on Michael Brantley. 9 6 Indians lead as we play in the seventh. They about hit the Tigers 9 to 7. Johnny Damon waiting on deck. That sails inside. Two balls, two strikes. Brantley off to a really good start here in the month of June. Entering tonight was batting 357 this month. He has really done a nice job for them this year. He now has 28 RBIs. And a swing and a miss. Coke strikes him out. Hey fans, don't forget to come to Comerica Park for interleague play June 15th through 17th when the Colorado Rockies come to town to take on your Tigers. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Might be one of the fighter of times to see Todd Helton, very talented first baseman for the Colorado Rockies for a number of years. Johnny Damon takes one inside. I don't know about Troy Tulowiski. He's on the disabled list as we speak with a growing issue, so I don't know if we'll see him or not. I had no idea how good he was until we saw him in Colorado. Oh, my goodness. He can really play both sides of the ball. The early returns, by the way, 66% say yes, they like interleague play. There's a ball high, 2 0 on Damon. Tigers, not so much last year, but since Jim Leland has taken over in interleague play, they have really gotten well as a club. They've won a lot of their interleague matchups since the beginning of 2006. Two and one. Well, that's the hope again this year. Going to Wrigley Field sparks memories of that 2006 season when the Tigers marched into Wrigley and really put on a show. Boy, did they. On their way to the World Series that year. Here's the 3 1. Fouled off. 3 2 now on Damon. The gambler Kenny Rogers won his 200th the big league game that weekend in Wrigley Field and it really felt like home games there for the Tigers because boy did they have a lot of fans there. Three and two. Speaking of fans how about all these fans here tonight. Another strong crowd. There's a walk to Damon. One on one out 31,350 here tonight. And they're expecting a large gathering here tomorrow afternoon as well to close out the series. And they continue to support their Tigers even though the Tigers are struggling right now as a club. Here is Kochman. Two run shot back in the fourth for Kochman one for three. Bender freezes him strike one.
Tiger bullpen really doing some good work in their last 18 games. The ERA is a shade over two. 2.05. Way outside. One ball, one strike. Dark skies, but no rain right now. And the one one. Two and one on Kochman. Temperature as well has dipped down to 69 degrees. It was in the upper 70s at game time. Laporta waiting on deck. Cope replacing Marte, who replaced Bilo. Scherzer was knocked out of the game in the fifth inning. Grounded foul. Two and two on the veteran Casey Kochman. Casey, one of those kids that grew up around the ballpark, had a chance to take batting practice, hang out with professional baseball players as a youth. His dad was a minor league manager in the Angels organization and a scout. Became really good friends with a lot of the Angels that came through the minor leagues. And the 2 2 is rolled foul, first base side. That is always an advantage for the kids that get a chance to do that. Prince also had a chance to do that watching his dad right here in Detroit play for the Tigers and of course he took a batting practice and hung around the clubhouse and very comfortable around big league players. Damon the runner at first. Checked it but he went. Strike three on Kochman. Second strikeout for Phil Cope. He went too far. He's going to leave it up to Matt Laporta. Oh, for three for Laporta. Although Cabrera robbed him of perhaps a double back in the second with a diving play at third base. He grounds that one foul. No balls in one strike. Damon walked with one out. We're in the seventh. Nine six in favor of the Indians. Outside. I was reading something on uh, Laporta. He was obtained by the Indians in that deal for CC Sabathia. And when you're a young player involved in a deal for a superstar like Sabathia, there comes a little bit of pressure with that to perform. The guy coming back to the other end, and uh, Laporta said he felt a little bit of that early on in his career. But that has since subsided because it's been a couple of years now. But he admitted that once he came to Cleveland, he felt a little bit more pressure. Well, he was the main principal in that deal coming from Milwaukee. He was the guy that the Cleveland Indians just had to have if uh, the deal was going to be completed. You see, one one grounded foul, one and two. And you really couldn't argue with his college numbers, nor could you argue with his numbers that he posted in the minor leagues for Milwaukee before the deal. 
What is it typically for guys that do roll through college and do roll through the minor leagues but can't seem to put it together at this level? Is it the mental part of the game? That has a lot to do with it and slow to make adjustments. I think when you get to the big leagues, you have to make adjustments from at bat to at bat because that's what the opposing pitchers are doing to you. It's a foul ball. And in the big leagues, they'll find a hole too. If you have a hole, the opposing pitching coaches will find that hole and they will pound it until you make the necessary adjustments. Right now, LaPorta's a dead pull hitter. There's no doubt about that. He's always been a dead pull hitter. Once Bruce or Manny gets him to start thinking about going up the middle, going the other way, he will be a better hitter. Way outside, 2-2. Two, two. Phil Coke coming on here in the seventh. Has struck out a couple of batters. And has walked Damon. LaPorta was a prolific power hitter at Florida in his collegiate days. And has hit a lot of home runs in the minor leagues. In fact, he was having a really good year at Triple A prior to his call up this year 14 home runs. And the 2 2. Swung on, belted, but foul. He got out in front of that one. They'll battle for it in the seats. 2 2, the count stays on Laporta. Indians tonight have had a pair of three run innings a three run first a three run fifth runner goes swing and a miss and that is that as Phil Coke strikes out the side stretch time coming up. Brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. And by Toyota. Brought to you by your Greater Detroit Toyota dealers. It has turned into a cloudy night here at the ballpark, but no rain right now. The Tigers need to get the offense going. They are down by three runs. And Brian Holiday will lead it off his big league debut tonight. Here's some of the particulars on Mr. Holiday. Out of Texas Christian University, born in Dallas, lives in Dallas. And he will start things off here in the seventh. 
Quentin Berry and Ramon Santiago to follow, and they are facing the side winding Joe Smith. Well, Manny Actor, their manager, if he has it his way, you'll see Smith in the seventh, Pastano in the eighth, and then Perez in the ninth. Holiday takes it outside, one ball, one strike. One defensive change in the outfield. That's Aaron Cunningham playing left field for Johnny Damon. Now the 1 1 is lifted down the right field line foul. Holiday got his first big league hit a single, which was part of that big fifth inning, a four run fifth for Detroit. Jim saying before the game today that. They felt that with Avila on the DL now they needed someone that go out there and play every day with Laird still hurting. And they felt that Holiday was a better choice than Omir Santos offensively and defensively. Here's the one two. Looped foul back out of play. That's a uh, nice spoil there on the two strike pitch from Smith. And he drops down to that sidearm angle and threw him a breaking ball that was located really nice. And Holiday just got a piece of it. Ground ball right back to the mound. Smith will handle this one. Holiday is one for three. One gone here in the seventh. Top of the order now, Quentin Berry. Barry had a double in an RBI in the fifth inning. Batting 316. He was 0 for 3 last night, but was hit by a pitch, stole it back. And misses high, 1 and 0. There is a great example of a young man getting his first opportunity and taking advantage of that opportunity. In there for a strike, 1 1. Took him quite a while to get here and to realize his big league dreams. Played collegiately at San Diego State for the Hall of Fame former player, Tony Gwynn. Santiago waiting on deck. Try to check, couldn't do it. Barry's out of there. Smith has a strikeout. You can join us again tomorrow afternoon for more baseball when the Tigers wrap up their series with the Indians. Coverage begins at 12:30 with Tigers Live. That's Tigers baseball tomorrow at 12:30 here on Fox Sports Detroit. Final game of the home stand before the Tigers again resume interleague play. Santiago looks at ball one. One ninety five average now for Ramon. He knocked in a run with a ground out of the fifth. That sails low. Should Santiago reach here? Cabrera is next. Sip came on in the sixth, had a one, two, three frame. Smith here in the seventh. And now he's falling behind 3 0 with Cabrera on deck. Right down the middle of strike. Bouncing ball right side. Kipnis waits on the hop. And the Tigers go one, two, three as we head to the eighth. We tell you Tigers baseball tonight is presented by Bell Tiger.
Anderson again was taking batting practice. And uh, apparently it went so well today. And that Austin will be headed down to Toledo tomorrow to start a rehab assignment. And it looks like the Tigers are getting closer and closer to getting their leadoff man back. Adding another dimension to that lineup. Austin was uh, telling me today how frustrating it is for him to one have the injury and two watch his team struggles while uh, he can't get out on the field and help them. And he says that's the one thing that when you're hurt you want to do. You want to get right back out there as soon as you can. But he has to really be careful with that abdominal strain. Well, Joaquin Benoit comes out of the bullpen now for Detroit. And Benoit pitching in his 25th game this year. He has a sub three ERA, 34 strikeouts this year for Joaquin in 22 and two thirds innings. And the majority of those strikeouts have been coming on his slider and his changeup. He's thrown a lot of all speed pitches this year. Lonnie Chisenhall leads it off. And he looks at strike one. Change piece right there to start Chisenhall off with. Chisenhall is 0 for 3 in his last five outings. Benoit, seven strikeouts in five innings. One earned run. Check swing rolled foul. Chisenhall, then the top of the order, Chu and Cabrera. The Indians have led all night after getting that three run homer in the first. They built an 8 2 lead only to have the Tigers come back to make it 8 6 and then 9 6 as Cleveland got one back. In the sixth inning. The 0 2. Foul tipped and Holiday unable to hold on to it. Meanwhile, it got home plate umpire Greg Gibson. And the 0-2. It'll go foul down the right field line. Indians came in at 29 and 25, yet they have played the fewest road games in the major leagues, only 22. So a good portion of their next couple of weeks will be on the road. It'll be a test for Manny Acta being away from progressive field. No doubt. Two waiting on deck. He's had a big night. And the 0-2. Bounced in there. One ball and two strikes. Jason Hall, a couple of grounders at a pop-up. Now 0 for 7 in the series. Foul straight back. Benoit follows Coke, who struck out the side around a walk in the seventh inning. Marte pitched the sixth. And Bilo faced a couple of batters in a crucial part of the game back in the fifth and got them both. Popped him up. Middle of the infield. Who wants it? The shortstop, Peralta. One gone. Javar Gillette has been a very busy man the last few weeks uh, with a lot of these uh, Tigers players working on their core. Gerald Laird also battling a hamstring injury himself. Hamstring injuries abound. Of course, Sevilla was placed on the DL with a hamstring problem. Chu takes ball one. Shinsu, a couple of singles, a double, three runs scored tonight for Cleveland, and he continues to get it done for the leadoff slot. He came in with an on base percentage of over 400 at the top of the lineup. That's in there for a strike, 1 1.
Tiger bullpen being counted on late here to keep this one close. Fouled off at home plate one and two on Shinsu Chu. Here's the one two outside two balls two strikes. As Drupal Cabrera waiting on deck. He tried to hold up unable to do it Benoit has a strikeout his first of the night two gone. It's a nice job of pitching there by Benoit to chew most of the pitches he had thrown to him previously at the bottom of the strike zone then he climbed the ladder uh, with a really good fastball that you couldn't hold up on. It's the fifth strikeout for the Tigers bullpen seven overall for the Tigers pitching staff. Here is Astruble Cabrera. And he skies one in the air to center field Barry started back now he's in. And it's going to be a one two three eighth inning time to get the bats going as we go to the bottom half of the eighth Cabrera. Fielder and then Young. It is 9 6 in favor of Cleveland. Tigers have been out hit 9 7, and the Indians, well, their bullpen has been really good tonight. They'll pull another piece out of their bullpen here as we go to the bottom of the eighth, and it'll be Vinny Pistano. Really, the Cleveland Indians bullpen has been outstanding against Detroit in really all five of the games they've played against them this year. No doubt. Well, we have Phil Coke, they have Pistano, and both guys like to enter the game in a special, different way. Who's faster? Come on, Coke. Run, Coke, run. Pretty close. You don't see many guys sprinting in from the bullpen. Whatever works for you. Coke wins. Here are the numbers on Vinny Pistano. Lights out numbers for Pistano. 31 strikeouts in 22 and two thirds. He's only walked nine. Uh, he's been lethal against right handers. Right handers hitting him at a 150 clip. Lefty's not much better. He is the setup man for Chris Perez. He's going to have to navigate through the middle of the Tiger lineup. It's Cabrera, Fielder, and Young. Cabrera will take a breaking ball like that and look like he's totally fooled, only to have you throw him another one. 
and he might just be sitting there waiting for it. Here is Pistano's 0 1. Came back with a fastball away, one ball, one strike. That's an old tactic that some hitters did a lot of back in the day. Not as many these days, but some of the veteran players, a rookie will throw them a breaking ball and they would swing and look bad on it, and <laughs> knowing that they're going to throw it again, and then hammer it and crush it. Popped him up. Right side of the infield. Kipnis Cabrera. Cabrera. One out. Cabrera frustrated with himself. Aye. Is that what he said? <laughs> Actually, probably something a little bit more forceful in his mind. <laughs> One gone here is Prince Fielder. Fielder had an RBI hit. He's back in the fifth. He drills this one in the air to center, but straight at Michael Brantley. And there are two gone. Nine straight retired now by Cleveland pitching. Eight in a row retired by their bullpen. Here's Delman Young. Ball outside to Delman. Well, this one slotting in nicely, as you mentioned earlier, in terms of what the Indians like to do. Smith in the seventh, Pistano in the eighth, and then turned it over to their closer. But it was their manager that uh, made probably the best move so far in this game, and that was to take Gomez out of the game after the fifth inning. Uh, usually, your starting pitchers will go a little deeper than that for you. If you're winning the game, and, but he knew what his best chance at winning this game was, and that was to take Jinmar out when he did. Delman had a rip on 2-0 and fouled it back 2-1. Sip gave him one inning, even though Sip's struggling this year out of that bullpen, but he knows what he's getting out of Smith and Pistano and Perez. In a shallow right field. Chu will come on to make the play, and it's another one, two, three inning for the Cleveland bullpen. We go to the ninth. Here at Comerica Park, it is 9 6. The Indians trying to win the first two games in this series as we go to the top of the ninth inning. And here is what is upcoming in terms of the June schedule for the Tigers. We've already talked about uh, going to Cincinnati and Chicago. 
And then when we get home, the Colorado Rockies will be waiting for the Tigers, and St. Louis Cardinals will come in after that. World champion St. Louis Cardinals. Meanwhile, in this one, Jose Valverde now is on the mound for Detroit. Well, one of those situations where Jim just had to get Benoit and Valverde in a game. They've only won one game on this current homestand, so Benoit and Valverde really uh, haven't been used very much. Jason Kipnis will be the first Indian to face him. First pitch is in for a strike on one. Kipnis in this one with an RBI single. His first hit in the series. He's also walked. Belverde replacing Benoit, who replaced Coke, who replaced Marte, who replaced Below. Back out of play. Well, and two now on Kipnis. They are getting nice production out of Kipnis at that second base position. They are the uh, initial numbers came out for the all star voting and Kipnis's name was nowhere to be found despite the fact that he's leading second baseman in a couple of categories. Well you know that's going to be reserved for Cano and Kensler and Pedroia. Yeah, too many other big names. But as far as those second tier second baseman. Kipnis's numbers. Very very good. Kinsler the early leader. A lot of Texas Rangers at those starting positions as we speak. Their fans must be voting a lot. High fly foul down the left field line. It usually looks like that as far as Yankees are concerned at all the starting spots in the early voting for the All Star game. Yeah, usually, but now the Rangers have taken over most of those spots. Robert Andino and Chris Getz have even gotten more votes than Kipnis. Really? Yeah, despite his numbers. Well, that may go hand in hand with the fact that uh, Cleveland not drawing many fans at all this year. Good point. Foul away. As a matter of fact, uh, their closer, Chris Perez, who is warming up now uh, in that uh, Indian bullpen, basically called out their entire fan base because they weren't supporting their club. And then he went out and backed it up with his pitching performance. It's very nice. One and two on Kipnis. Ground ball right side. Santiago scooting over to his left. Kipnis is out. That's a battle that you don't ever win, though, as a player. You don't mess with the fans. Nope. You don't win that battle. Perez heating up for what appears to be another opportunity to save a game. Cleveland Indians have won the first four games of the season series against the Tigers, and Perez has saved all four games. Here is Carlos Santana. Check swing, strike call. Santana does not have a hit tonight reaching on an air back in the first and scoring a run. One and one. Really been frustrating for the Tigers even on a night where they score six runs they have a big inning of four run fifth they still trail by three. Had to play catch up to get there. And they were down 8 2 at one point. The 1 1 pitch. Broken bat roller to the right side. Prince has it. And Santana's out, two gone. Hey, don't forget, uh, as soon as this game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live here from the manager, Jim Leland, and the players. Plus, we'll break down the game, show you all the highlights. Tigers Live immediately. After this game here on Fox Sports Detroit. So Valverde now will go to work against Michael Brantley who set the tone early in this one with a three run. Home run in the first inning.
Tiger bullpen has retired 10 of the last 11. Uh, Damon Walk has been their only base runner in that stretch. So they've done their job tonight. The 1 0 pitch. There's a ball outside 2 0. Well, Verdi in his career against the Indians, 11 saves, 15 appearances. Foul away. Two and one. Indians trying to take the first two in this series. They have not lost to the Tigers yet this year. They swept them back in Cleveland. They've won all four so far. Now the 2-1. Two, 2-2 two, two on Michael Brantley. Driven toward the gap in left center field. Barry is on the run. Stretching out. Oh, what a catch by Quentin Barry. Look out, Q. That was sweet. A spectacular play by the Tigers center fielder. Look at this. What a spectacular play by Quentin Berry. When it left Brantley's bat, I thought it was triple all the way into that left center field gap. You see how far Quentin had to come from, and he stretches out and makes a play and lands soft enough to where when he does hit the ground, the ball does not jar out of the glove. So the Tigers trying to ride the momentum of that play need three runs here in the bottom of the ninth. And Chris Perez, their closer, is on. 190 opponent's batting average against Chris Perez this year. 18 of 19 in the save department. Lots of fastballs and sliders. He comes right after you. And it is strike one on Bosch. For three in this game for Brennan. 223 batting average now. Trying to get it rolling here in the ninth. Tigers down 9-6. Is a chopper hit slowly back up the middle Cabrera one gone looked like he wanted to use his bare hand there again 
Hey fans, you want to follow your Tigers with MLB.com at bat 12 for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. Get live audio pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Tigers.com for details. Here is Johnny Peralta with one out. Ball one inside. Double run scored tonight for Johnny. He ignited that four run fifth inning with a two base hit. Will the rally caps work tonight? Ball high, 2 0. Oh. Chris Perez had 36 saves last year, 23 the year before that. That's in there, two and one. Perez leads the American League with 18 saves. Fouled away, 2-2 two, two on Johnny Peralta. Yeah, these saves leaders in the American League. Jim Johnson, Fernando Rodney each with 17. But Perez this year four for four in chances against Detroit. Breaking ball hammered in the air to right center field. Brantley long run can't get it in a drop in and go to the wall. Peralta hits the bag at second he's coming to third. And he's in there standing up. A little bit of life for Detroit. Lack of uh, communication out there between Chu and Brantley and it looked like Brantley was going to catch it. And then he just simply pulled up. I don't know if he thought there was going to be a collision between he and Chu, but that is the center fielder's ball. He is the captain in the outfield, and he can call the corner outfielders off on any play. So the Tigers have their eighth hit. Here's Don Kelly, and he looks at strike one. Kelly is one for three tonight. Here's a strike call. And now it is 0 2. Uh, Don. Tigers bottom the lineup trying to get it done here in the ninth. And the 0 2 pitch. Got him. Strike three. Kelly is caught looking on a 95 mile an hour heater by Perez. At the knees, on the black, inside. So the Tigers down to the final out now. It's the catcher, Holiday, and he looks at ball one. Picked up his first major league hit back in the fifth, a single. That's in there a strike one and one on Brian Holiday. Brian had his mom and dad here. Said he called his dad last night to tell him he was getting called up, and he said he thought his dad had a plane ticket before he got his. <laughs> Popped him up. Should do it. Santana. And that is that. Perez does it again as he nails down another save. And the Indians have won the first two games of the series. It's been a rough homestand. Only one win for the Tigers on this current homestand. And they are now 7 and 22. Well, five in a row for the Indians over the Tigers this year. We'll step aside, back with more. Perez nails this one down for the trial.